Good evening. Uh, this is uh, Ribuani. I'm your teacher from 10 times a better generation school of ministries. Uh, the ministry is headed by senior pastor Budeli and ours is to equip the saints. We have been laboring on a very, very crucial and important subject, which is the believer's affirmation. We've laid out the foundation for beginning the year. Now we are progressing in getting the year done. And in doing that, I believe it's necessary that, as usual, we equip one another to do it right. And today we are going to continue with the believer's affirmation with a twist of faith. So let us um, pray first and we'll get straight into the word. Thank you, Father, for you and your word. You are one. We are thankful that, Father, when we listen to your word, when we partake of your word, Lord, there is growth. And we are growing, growing from one level of grace and glory to the other. We know that in 2022, Father, we are growing to a higher level. We know that where God is, there is no stagnancy, but there is growth, there is movement, there is life, and there is a life in abundance. I'm thankful that, Father, when we partake of your word, Lord, our lives, they will no longer be the same. Our lives, Lord, they cut up out to the world, they build up according to the word. And we know that, Father, indeed, as we build up in the word, victory for our lives it is certain it is guaranteed because father we know the one that lives and abides in us both to do of his will and his good pleasure is you lord you are all-knowing you are powerful you are majesty lord and just by virtue of that we also say that we are powerful we are made in your express image and your likeness and we partake of your victory and the victory of Christ. Lord, it is ours because, Father, you live and abide in us both to do of your will and good pleasure. We are thankful that, Father, when your word is shared today, we receive the revelation of the word, we receive understanding, and, Father, we will be well able to apply this word in our own lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Straight to the word, like I said, we are not going to waste time, not at all. Today we will start off in uh, John 6, 63. All of this is building up from what we've been teaching all along. And uh, as we start, John 6, 63 reads that it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh conveys no benefit. It is of no account. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life, providing eternal life. This is to rubber stamp that we are made in the express image and the likeness of God. And it is our part to continue with creation here on earth. We continue with creation where God has left it off because he said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. And after he said that, we must be cognizant that if we are made in the image and the express likeness of God, then we are gods here on earth, given dominion and authority here on earth. We are managing earth on God's behalf. Why? Because we've been given, we've been given the legal authority to operate here on earth. And how best do we operate? We operate in the spiritual. We understand that... Um, Nothing that was ever made on this earth was made without the word of God. And as we understand the spiritual, we understand that we acknowledge the physical things that are around us. We acknowledge our problems. We acknowledge our issues. But we don't dwell on them. We dwell on the finished work of Christ Jesus. We dwell on what God has accomplished for us. And we dwell on the spiritual because the spiritual is what changes the physical, everything starts in the spirit. And that's where we are saying, as much as we see that as John 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life. We are going to give lives into our lives by the words that we speak, because the words that we speak 
They are spirit and they are life. And wherever there is uh, death, wherever there is no life, we bring about life by the word of God. Matthew 6.63 I mean 6.33 has been our key scripture. It reads that, but first and most importantly, sick. You know when you're sick, when you look for something, you find it. As long as you are diligent in your seeking, as long as you are persistent in your seeking, as long as you are determined, as long as you are not waved or swirled away by the anomalies of life, by the stumbling blocks, by the uncertainty, by the discomfort, you will get the results. But seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. That has been our key scripture. So we know that as far as we have started our year, we've been dedicating it to God, we've dedicated to God. We know that this is the year of God. And if it is the year of God we understood and we've been laboring on saying that, if 2022 is the year of God and we believe it, we do things the God kind of way. What is the God kind of way? How does God do things? God teaches us that nothing that was ever made was made without his word. And if we are to exercise our God-given dominion here on earth, it means that for whatever we do, whatever we engage in, whatever we start, we have to start it in the Word. We have to start it with God. How do we start it with God? We imitate God the Father, Ephesians 5 verse 1. Because it says that, Beloved children, be therefore imitators of God the Father. What is God the Father? He's a life-giving spirit. He speaks that which he believes in his heart. He doesn't believe um, going too fast there. He speaks what he believes in his heart. He speaks that which he's full of in his heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, God speaks. God is full of life. He is full of faith. And then he's not speaking based on the circumstances. He's not letting the circumstances dictate to him. The circumstances, yes, they are physical. But we know that our troubles, we know that whatever we are going through, it is temporary. And what do we do to change it? We open our mouths and we speak. Why? Because we are gods here on earth and we are continuing with creation where God has left it off. So it is our part to open our mouth and speak and exercise God-given dominion here on earth. And you know, it says when we do that, God is glorified even more. It is not for our glory, but for the glory of God. Many times we start things and we don't finish them. We listen to messages of prayer, messages of the word of God in the beginning only of the year. We don't stick to doing it consistently. And there the relationship starts to suffer because now you are going to be a mediocre Christian. You go to God when you have issues. But this God says in his word uh, that if you remain in me and I in you and the relationship exists and the relationship is maintained, then you will bear fruits of the relationship. You will benefit from the relationship. But if you do not spend time with God in prayer and his word, how then do you expect your faith to be effective? I know that as far as the word says that your faith, is made even more effective when you acknowledge every good thing which is in you in Christ. Every good thing which is in you in Christ is in the Word of God. And unless you spend time in the Word, your faith will not be effective. What does that teach us? It teaches us that 
As John 15 reads, I'll start off in verses 4 today because we've labored on, on, on the other ones. Verses 4 says, remain in me. It's a conscious choice. It's a decision. The year may be great. The year may be rough. We'll meet turbulence along the way. It's not smooth sailing. That we are aware of. But it says in all of that, I miss the chaos. I miss the trouble. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine. It means that we are connected to God. The relationship is like you walking around with your shadow. Because your shadow would never leave you. You and God intertwined. You remaining in God and God will remain in you. Why? Because he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. The branches die if the vine does not feed them with water. And if you dare to take on the year without God, if you dare to digress, you must know the relationship is suffering. And when it is suffering, how then do you expect to bear fruit? Let me read verses 4 in full. John 15 verses 4. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself, without remaining in the vine. It continues, neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith, unless you remain in me. As we said that we want to take a twist of faith. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Faith is the assurance of things not yet seen by the physical eye. But faith is evidence nonetheless. Though not seen by the physical eye, it is perceived by the spiritual eye. And we understand that what is more real is what is spiritual than what is physical. Because what is uh, physical comes of the spiritual. So if you remain in the faith, you will get the results of the spiritual. And the spiritual always becomes physical. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the rest shall be added upon. How do you seek? You remain in me and I in you. You maintain the relationship with the word of God. You pray. You study the word. You meditate. How do I pray? Consciously. Set times to pray. If it's every hour on the 59th minute, just say a simple prayer, Lord, I love you. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my health. I thank you for my wealth. I thank you for my good success. It's not even a minute. It's a prayer. The rationale is, don't make the things of God complicated. Because they are not. You don't have to pray endless hours of prayer to get the results. You have to pray diligently. It says the earnest, fervent prayer of a righteous man. God, yes. You just need to not speak gibberish, but speak what is right. Speak the word. We are doing the year of prayer. The year of change. The year of moving to a higher level. And that year entails that you spend time in the word of god you spend time with god because there god is your life source god is the source of your total supply and we know that unless you remain in him neither can you bear fruit you won't have evidence of your faith unless you are not in god let me be practical. Many are times that we pray for things. We believe that we're going to receive them. We believe that we have them. And we forget to exercise and we forget to maintain the relationship by prayer. Those things are delayed because we are not in the relationship anymore. Usually those things don't happen. Because we fail to maintain the relationship. 
say they do happen they do happen very late because you you you, you fell off the wagon i want to remind you that it was not a smooth ride for christ but he made it regardless by no means will it be a smooth ride for you but you will make it regardless you know what makes the ride smooth it's the words that you open your mouth and you speak and you declare the victory of christ as yours and hey man woman brother sister life gets softer things get easier but unless we acknowledge our true identity, unless we know who we really are, then we miss the mark. Let's get to the latter part which I spoke of. The triumphs of faith. Because we are leading a victorious 2022. That's what I believe. I believe that this year we are doing extraordinary things. As the theme of the year says that we are moving to a higher level. I believe that also. That in our earthly walk, in all we do, what is going to show is our indeed moving to a higher level. Hebrews 11 verses 1 gives us an explanation of what faith is. And it reads that, now faith is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation. I'd like to remind you that when it says title deed, it means that you have ownership of the thing. Title deed means that legally you own, you possess that thing. And I want to remind you now that this is the faith year of moving to a higher level, of making what was distant, what was further away, much closer. And making it realize here on earth, in your earthly walk. Despite the challenges, despite the troubles you go through, despite your shortcomings. Faith is the same assurance. And faith, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for. Divinely guaranteed by the Lord himself. They are guaranteed when you remain in him because he will remain in you. And there you will bear fruit because God lives and abides in you. How then do you expect to have the faith results unless you stay in the faith? Faith, the evidence of things not seen. The conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. For by this kind of faith, the man of old gained divine approval. I'd like to believe that the man of old gained divine approval by faith. They were not quick to question things of God. They listened and they were obedient and they did as the word said. We've been saying and laboring all along that Nothing that was ever done was done without faith. Nothing that was ever done was done without the word of God. The word of God is the faith. The word of God is the substance. The word of God is the confidence in the power and the wisdom and goodness of God. By faith, with an inherent trust and understanding, we know that the word of God it endures forever and it has power. We know that nothing that was ever made was made without the word of God. And we know that to lead a victorious life here on earth, we ought to use faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. And if you are born again, if you are a child of God, you are well within your rights to exercise and use that currency. And what do you do? You open your mouth and you speak. Because you speak that which you are full of. If you spend time, if you, are, if you remain in God and God remains in you, nothing else that you will speak will be in contrary with the word of God. You will speak the word of God. You will speak the promises of God for your life. Verses 3 of Hebrews 11. By faith, that is, with an inherent trust and enduring confidence in the power 
wisdom and goodness of God. We understand that the world's universe ages were framed and created, put in order and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. Reminder, nothing that was made was ever made without the word. Moving forward, so that what is seen was not made out of the things which are visible. Verse 4, by faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, than Cain through which it was testified of him that he was righteous, upright, in right standing with God, and God testified by accepting his gifts. And though he died, yet through his act of faith, he still speaks. By faith, verses 5, that pleased God, Enoch, a man who lived here on earth like me and you, was caught up and taken to heaven so that he would not have a glimpse of death. By what? By faith. And he was not found because God had taken him. For even before he was taken to heaven, he received testimony. Still on record today that he had walked with God and pleased him. Enoch, Abel, they both walked here on earth. Christ himself walked here on earth. They met the challenges that they, we are meeting probably today. Some far worse, some better. In John 2, we also experienced the miracle at Cana, where Christ turned the water into wine. Mary just told those that were around there that though the wine is finished here, do what he tells you. I want to remind you that though you are going through troubles, though things are not going your way, though you are not where you planned to be in life, I want to remind you that is temporary. I want to remind you that you will get where you intend in life as long as you remain in God and have faith in God. I want to remind you that nothing is impossible with God. I want to remind you that this is by no way an easy ride here on earth. But boy, it's comfortable. It's great. Because we have assurance that he that has began a good work in us will see it until the coming of Christ. I want to remind you that your troubles, your persecutions, they are temporary. I want to remind you that here on earth you will lead a successful life for as long as you remain in God and allow God to remain in you as well. For as long as you choose to see beyond the challenges and circumstances, because it is your choice, it is your challenges, they are your circumstances, but if you choose to see beyond them, boy, woman, I am telling you today, you will be victorious. I want to remind you that God lives and abides in you and don't let the God in you suffer. When you know that God indeed lives and abides in you, then let him take control. You do it by faith. You allow him, you open your mouth and you speak. You call things to be and they be because you are made in the express image and the likeness of God and you will get the results of God. As God spoke and he saw you will speak and you will see. For as long as you believe in your heart, you will get the results of what you speak. I want to tell you today that it is well. In the middle of your chaos, it is well. I want to remind you that all the years that the lockers have stolen or eaten, God will restore. A good measure, press it down, shaken together, running over, that is your portion. I want to remind you that you will go only as far as you say with your mouth. 
If your mouth is seeing the visions of God, you will go as far as your vision goes. I want to remind you, if you see visions, it is a gift from God. Don't take it for granted. It's a blessing. I want to remind you that we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So you don't need to be blessed. You're already blessed. I want to remind you that you are by no way ordinary. You are extraordinary. You are made in the express image and likeness of God. And therefore exercise your God-given authority and dominion here on earth. We've come to the beginning of the end of our service. Let's meet again next week, but let's make our confession in wrapping up. You repeat after me. Thank you, Father, for I am made in your express image and in your likeness. I thank you, Father, for I am a spiritual being. I open my mouth and I speak. I send your word for my life, for my circumstances. For everything that pertains to my life, Lord, I subject it to your word. And I'm thankful that, Father, when I subject my life, everything, Lord, unto you, I will get the results of your word. I will triumph. I will be victorious always. I'm thankful that, Father, I am a spirit being with your authority and your dominion here on earth, and I will exercise it. I have made a conscious choice for 2022, and my choice is, Lord, I seek first, and most importantly, Lord, your kingdom and your righteousness your way of doing things, your way of being right, your attitude and character, my Lord. And I know that when I do this, all these other things will be given to me also. All these other things, Lord, they have been given to me also. I make a conscious choice, Lord, to take John 15. And I say, Lord, I choose to remain in you. And I know you will remain in me as long as I remain in you. And I know that, Father, being connected to you, I will bear much fruit. I say, Lord, as they say here on earth, this life is about connections. I am connected to the highest connection, which is you, Lord. And with your connection, nothing is impossible, Lord. Your connection, Lord, bears no burden. And I know that, Lord, as long as I am connected to you, the source of all total supply, I will never be broke. I will never be sick. My well, it will never run dry. I am thankful that, Father, I have you as my connection, the master connection. And all things, Lord, they will work together for me. I am thankful, Father, that I have faith. I have assurance. I have confirmation that the things I hoped for, the things I pray for, they are guaranteed. I have the evidence of the faith. I have the conviction that, Father, everything that I've prayed for, it will come to pass. I am thankful that, Father, I will exercise the fruits of the Spirit and Lord, I will get more and more. Lastly, Lord, I say, I look at my challenges and I speak to them right now and I say, 
all your challenges, all your trials, all your discomfort. Throw yourself into the sea. I cast them all to you, Lord. I do not look back at them again. I am confident and I have the assurance and I have the faith and I believe that, Lord, all of those issues with you, in you, they are in good hands. And mine is to seek first and most importantly, your kingdom and your righteousness. And I know that, Lord, the rest is added upon. I have this assurance, and that is why, Lord, I make this affirmation of faith in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Believe I want to remind you that God is good. I want to remind you that God loves you. I want to remind you that go on and be great. What a year that Lord has prepared for you. Don't be ordinary. You are extraordinary. You are made in the express image and the likeness of God. So therefore spread your wings and go out and be great and enjoy the goodness of God. Remember, your connection is God. And continue with creation where he's left it off. Amen, 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 amen. This is the Believer's Affirmation Session number 9. Be even more blessed. Like we said, all the messages are available on YouTube. Care to subscribe, listen to whatever you've missed. Share the messages. Let us grow from one level of grace and glory to the other. 2022, we move to a higher level. Amen.